We present Kinetra, a playful, fun animation system where novices can bring the world around them to life. One, two, three. One, two, three. Welcome to the Full Spectrum. This is Samuel K. Moore with IEEE Spectrum. I'm here with Sharam Izadi and Jiwan Chen. Hi there, Sam. Hi. Hi. They're both from Microsoft Research and they're going to tell us about the Kinetra project. Kinetra is a new system that lets you animate objects with your own movements. The first step is you, know, you take a uh, standard uh, consumer Kinect camera and you wave it around an object which you know, captures a high quality digital 3D mo model of it. And the next step is once you put the camera down and you ideally move the object out of the way, this will actually segment the object away from the background. And then you put yourself into its place and then depending on how you know you want to possess this object, controlling different parts of it with your body, and once you're in position, you say the word possess, and then you'll uh, this, uh, the system will automatically make you control the right parts. So, how long have you wanted to haunt furniture? That's a great question. So, uh, last year at SIGGRAPH, we showed a project called Connect Fusion, and the basic idea with this project was to take an ordinary Connect camera, and rather than placing it on your uh, near your TV screen and using it in a, in, a, in a gaming scenario, what we wanted to do was take a handheld Kinect camera, something that you can hold in your hand, and move it around in your environment and rapidly scan in 3D objects. So acquire 3D models of any object that we, that, that we desired. And so beyond this project, we started to ponder what can we do um, with these static uh, reconstructions that we've captured. How do we actually breathe life, in, life into those uh, reconstructions? Yeah, the question kind of naturally arose because, well, we realized that Connect Fusion could be used to scan people, but then you get very, you know, statues of people. So we have a uh, an intern named David. So we thought we should make a statue of David and then take over his body. What we have is we adapted a, a technique called embedded deformation, which can automatically generate a deformation graph which is a proxy for the skeleton that's generated fully automatically and then so we can animate this data without having to do any work. I mean, what, what we're trying to do with this project is remove the, 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 pro, the sort of process in terms of adding animations to, to 3D models. How does the chair or step stool interact with, um, with objects? What we can do is, given this mesh, we approximate it with a set of spheres. It's you know it's fully automatic and this approximation is fairly good and it's very useful for physics because uh, spheres are very uh, easy to co collide against and can compute contact forces. We can essentially have arbitrary things that we scan and interact in a fairly realistic fashion with other objects in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as Kevin says, we take the three D mesh, we approximate it as a series of these spheres that live in a physics simulation, and these are uh, rigid objects that can interact with other objects that, that uh, we might be using, for example, in the in the dodgeball scenario. Um, and then when we compute deformations using this uh, deformation graph approach, we propagate those deformations to the to the sphere proxies and rearrange them based on the the motion of the the human. Some of this sounds like it might be pretty compute intensive. Is this within the capabilities of, uh, say, an Xbox today? We've been programming with a regular uh, desktop PC. Um, and in fact, the demo is running on a laptop. I guess the main, the, the main part that requires computing power is um, the, the part where we, based on the, the motions of the human, have to recompute the deformation graph. We haven't actually ported this to, to an Xbox. Um, but maybe one day you could imagine this being being uh, being able to run on a, on an Xbox computer. Can game developers expect uh, to get access to this uh, anytime soon? Hopefully, we'll get productized in the in the future. But currently, there are there there are no productization plans. Do you have a next step for this? Is there something you want to do further along this line? One interesting uh, possibility that we tr that we just began to explore in the uh, in the connector work is enabling multiple people to carry out deformations. And I, I think that, that's something that's particularly uh, uh, engaging. Uh, um, so you can imagine a scenario where, rather than controlling the, all of the, the, the chair with just one body, you can actually uh, embed two people or multiple people into, into objects. We showed that with the horse example, but that could, that could work in a number of different uh, scenarios. Um, and then actually tying this more closely to an application, whether it's uh, 
a sort of gaming scenario or some sort of home CG scenario could be quite interesting. Yeah. Kevin, I guess the one uh, what I was thinking about was just uh, adding the network to it. So uh, you can, this is kind of ideal for the next generation of kind of avatars for telepresence. I have to ask, um, what's with the name? My wife is uh, taking French lessons, and uh, uh, she mentioned the word etre, which is to be in French, uh, and we kind of slotted it together with uh, with connect and the play on uh, connect, and we came up with connectra. So I've been taking credit for the name, but it's actually my wife. Uh, thanks again Great. for your time, guys. Um, we've been talking with uh, Sharam Izadi and uh, Joa Kevin Chen from Microsoft Research. Uh, about their Kinetro project. Thanks a lot, guys. It was fascinating stuff. Thanks. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks for watching this episode of The Full Spectrum. I'm Samuel K. Moore.